Okay. Hello guys, in this guide we are going through some functionalities of Open Zeppelin Defender. Uh, now uh, we can access Open Zeppelin Contracts Wizard. It's a tool for creating uh, basic samples for contracts. As you can see, uh, we are using ERC20 uh, and uh, you can access name and symbol of the basic ERC token. Also, if you want, you can uh, add some additional features. Yeah, there, is, there are a lot of uh, inputs you can choose from, as you can see. But uh, we'll start with uh, picking the right token type. And in this guide, we use ERC20, so a regular currency token. So let's name it currency and symbol, whatever you want. And uh, here, let's uh, choose how many tokens will be pre-minted when you deploy the smart contract. So as you can see, it's done as usual in the constructor. And uh, down here, it gets more interesting because we have a lot of features to choose from. And for sure, we'll need the mintable one because we want to be able to mint um, more uh, currency on top of the 10,000 initial tokens. We also need it to be burnable so that we can burn some of them, so that delete some of them if we are permitted to. And we need to make the smart contract pausable so that we can pause it whenever we want or then unpause it. And the pause functionality uh, blocks some of the features so that we can't use it when the contract is paused. Down here, you have four other options, which are quite advanced and uh, we won't be using in this guide. Yeah, so uh, next panel is about access control. Uh, as you can see in the code uh, for the function pause or mint uh, or unpause, only owner uh, now can access it. Uh, and it's everything about ownable, so uh, the yeah. deployer, the owner of the contract uh, only can uh, manipulate of the functions with uh, owners. But if you choose roles instead, if you click on it, uh, then we can uh, set by ourselves uh, who will be um, permitted to use a specific role. For example, we will choose uh, which address will uh, have an access to the polls uh, or which address will have uh, a permit to uh, the mint. Mm, and it's about uh, access control, right? As we can see. Yeah, so it's a very interesting feature and let's use it in our smart contract. And what's next down below, we have the upgradability function, which is even more interesting but uh, it's pretty complicated and so now uh, we want to stick to the basics and just disable it so that uh, our smart contract will be immutable so when we deploy it we can't uh, make any big changes and um, that's about it and um, when we are ready and uh, we think that uh, we checked everything we want we can either copy the contract to the clipboard or even better, we can open it in Remix. Mm -hmm. There is one change for, to that because we are going for the upgradability. Uh, we cannot uh, access in uh, directly in Remix, as you can see now. Yeah, for that you would need to use uh, your custom Visual Studio Code implementation. And let's keep it simple and yeah. uh, use Remix for now. here. Yeah. Okay, so now while we are in Remix, uh, we can compile the contract to check if it's okay, everything. Yeah, as we can see, it compiled right. And now we are going to deployment section. Uh, here we will be using uh, Injected Web3 because we want to send it uh, into the network. Yes, exactly. We have an account because we uh, already connected MetaMask. Uh, and uh, now we have to choose the contract because uh, we are inheriting a lot of them. Yes, it is our currency. We are going through deploy. Yeah, and also we need to make sure that we publish it to IPFS so that uh, in a second we can uh, use Sourceify to make the contract, the source code, publicly available, which will be very helpful and necessary for uh, Defender. So let's deploy it. Uh, we use Rinkyb here, and um, I confirm the transaction.
we should have a visual feedback right here. Yeah, exactly. When the token is deployed. So we can expand it. And as you can see, uh, we have all of the interactions available, all of the functions we can use. But uh, for now, let's make the contract, uh, the source code publicly available. So we need to copy the uh, contract address and uh, move on to Sourceify. If you don't have this tool, uh, you can go to the plugin manager section and just look for it. And here you can install the plugin we need. So uh, when you're ready, just uh, skip the contract fetcher functionality, go directly to verifier, just uh, write network, uh, paste the address we copied a minute before and verify it. Anyhow, the contract is verified, so uh, everybody can access the source code and uh, also Defender will be able to address the source code and all of the interfaces, so now we can move on to Defender. Okay, so now we are on OpenSnap Plugin Defender. Uh, to access our contract, we have to click Add Contract, Import Contract after that, and here we'll be choosing uh, our name of the contract. So currency, I think. Network will be RinkyB, because we used it. And address will be copy-pasted from the remix uh, we've already deployed, right? Yep. Just copy it. Yeah. And it will be analyzing, right? Yeah, and um, as you can see, we have the ABI fetched. And uh, it's only fetched because uh, we used uh, Sourceify a I minute mean, before and uh, it made the ABI publicly available so that Defender was able to fetch it and will be able to integrate with the contract because it knows its interface. Yeah, also opens up in Defender uh, detects contract features. So we chose uh, pause, right? So we can see that pauseable is confirmed. Also, we did not choose to uh, get upgradability, so it's not upgradable. And we click add. And here is our contract and status is running. Yep. So now we will need to create a Genesis safe for a safer uh, transaction authorization. So uh, we will need to create a new contract from the admin panel and select create Genesis safe. And here let's select the name and let's it be currency safe network ringy b and uh, add owners so here's the thing when you use genesis you can make it so that you have multiple owners but you need uh, let's say two owners two out of three to agree before the transaction goes through so not only one account so uh, yeah. And it will be choosing it on the threshold input, right? Yeah. Uh, how many owners do we need to access some of the changes, proposals? Yeah, so considering we are adding three accounts, so I'll add uh, some of my other accounts. Let's say this one and this one. Where is that? Here it is. And now we, as Bart said, we can set that we need uh, two approvals to make any transaction go through. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Now we can create the Genesis safe. And one small thing, which is very convenient, you can add aliases to your addresses because it's hard to remember them and you won't be able to, you won't have to copy them from your MetaMask. So we just click on set address alias and uh, let's call it my MetaMask2. And here it is. Next time you want to have this account, you can find it using this simple uh, name instead of typing in the address. 
so to create the Genesis save, we need a one time transaction. And uh, we have uh, insufficient funds, so I'll have to make sure that I'm on the right account. So reject this transaction, go to the original one, and um, it should be able to cover the fee, but let's try again. Yeah, so now it goes through and we can create the Genesis save. Take a second, it's a uh, transaction going through and here it is. It's ready, so we can move to our original smart contract and start using the Genesis safe. Yes, because mainly we are going uh, for the minting. And uh, to do that, we have to go uh, back, as uh, Jacob said, uh, to the R contract and create new proposal. It will be something like a function, because now we are trying to access uh, the functions uh, of our contract. So we go to the admin action. So now we are in uh, action panel. So we are going to choose the function. Uh, we will choose min. Okay, which is the address we're going uh, to mint tokens, MetaMask, okay, and amount. Yeah, so maybe 10, but uh, we can't uh, leave just 10 here. We need to pass the value in way. So let's use a if to way calculator. And it's gonna be 10 if. So it's this much way mm -hmm. okay so we're going for eoa right yep okay the title trying to uh, mint token okay mm -hmm. now i wanted to mention that it won't let us mint because we don't have a minter nor admin role yet so we'll try to create admin action Ah, okay, so for this case, we would need to use multisig, I think, because uh, our original account has all of the roles, but uh, multi-signature contract doesn't yet. So if we use the uh, Genesis save here, it shouldn't go through because we haven't granted it the roles yet. Oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, trying to mean the token shouldn't go through. Okay, we got the problem, so it won't let us mint. So now we will be going to uh, grant admin role. Okay, copy paste now from the right. Choosing account. So it's our Genesis save. Yeah, multi-seek. Now we want to EOA, right? So from our MetaMask, we'll uh, grant access for the multi -seek we've created before. And we'll change title maybe for uh, giving gra uh, granting role, right? Yes, and now we'll try to test it out. Okay, great. Now oh, everything is right, we can approve and execute. It's connecting to our MetaMask, so we need to make a transaction. Okay, the proposal was executed. So now our Genosis Multiseq uh, has admin role. So now Gnosis can uh, grant uh, himself also meter role, right? So we can go to admin. Uh, we'll go to currency, our contract. New proposal, of course. Admin action. And now we'll try to grant uh, our meter role. So now we will copy paste that this one. To the multi -seek. Yes. And uh, 
Now we can use Multisig because uh, he has uh, Admin role. Yep. Title Granting Minting role. Yes. Create an action. Okay, and now we can see that at least two approvals are needed because we are using now Genosis, not EOA. Yep. So, so let's approve using the first account, first MetaMask account, and uh, we need to sign the signature here. And as you can see, it's like one out of two. So we need to switch a new MetaMask account to second one we provided before and um, approve it again or approve and execute so uh, when we approve and execute the transaction will go through so just signing it doesn't interact with our actual currency contract yet so everything stays on genesis but uh, when everything's approved and execute executed then uh, genesis uh, uh, puts the transaction through to our actual uh, currency contract. So let's execute it now. And confirm. It's executing, but in the meantime, I just wanted to mention that uh, we could also grant the minter role using our original address and the EOA method, but uh, we use this method to show you how the multi sign works. So it's executed and done. Yes, exactly. And now we can return to our contract because uh, our mission is to mint the token, the actual token. So we're going again to the new proposal, and in action, of course. Function will be mint. Okay. Uh, two. We will choose hmm. maybe our MetaMask. Yeah, might be okay. Amount. So again, uh, our converter. Here it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we will choose MultiSeq, of course. And title Mint. Minting using yeah. MultiSignature. Multi. Yeah. And create admin action. Now we can say it's going through, not like before. Yep, okay. it has the minter role, so... Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now we have multisig again, so we need at least two approvals to get through it. Yeah, second uh, approval, approve and execute. And Again, here it is. Yeah, Processing. to execute. Yep, so that's about it. Um, having a multi signature uh, functionality where you need uh, two or uh, however, how many you want approvals to uh, make your functions go through. So uh, it's much safer than using only one account because, in case you lose one MetaMask account or somebody uh, hacks your account or get access to it. Uh, it can get pretty messy. Okay, so um, now we have two accounts which uh, have both admin and minter role. But in case uh, we want to make it so that only the multi signature account is authorized to, let's say, mint new tokens, we can revoke the minter role from the original account. To do this, we have to go to uh, the uh, admin page and select our smart contract 
and create a new proposal. And uh, now we want to uh, revoke role, revoke the minter role, so let's paste it, from our original MetaMask account. We'll use multi-signature to get rid of him. And um, let's call it revoking minter role from the original account. Okay, so now we have the draft uh, of the approval, uh, a draft of the transaction. So uh, we can approve it. Again, need two accounts. Now signing using the second one. And yeah, it's confirmed. So uh, uh, now we can try to mint new tokens using the original account. And it shouldn't be allowed, but let's test it to be sure. So let's say we will only want to mint 100 way to the original account using the original account. So we have to be sure to switch to the account you want to test so it's this one and it's changed and um, trying to mint without the permission and it fails but again um, if you want to mint new tokens now we have to use the multi-signature feature which will go through And as you can see, there are no initial errors and the transaction is ready to be signed and um, the tokens will be minted. So now uh, you can only use the Genodi safe for uh, all of the minting. The previous account, which has allowed to use it by itself without any other approvals, uh, has uh, uh, got the role revoked. Okay, so now uh, we get an access to admin section. Uh, we can uh, approve by at least two MetaMasks account. Uh, also, uh, we can mint, we can grant role, uh, and we can manage our contract deployed uh, on Remix uh, in the uh, Open Zeppelin Defender tool. Yep, and there are much more interesting tools in Open Zeppelin, which uh, we'll go through in the next videos. So. That's about it regarding the admin section and um, see you next time. Yeah, see you next time.